hello and welcome to Footnotes the Cicerone podcast, a podcast to inspire you about outdoor travel and activities in the UK and across the world. I'm Hannah and I hope you enjoy this episode. You can always email me with your thoughts or questions on live at cicerone.co.uk and I'd love to hear from you. Today we're not talking about how beautiful the Wales Coast Path is or indeed how to walk the route because we have covered that. We have got a live event that we recorded with Paddy all about walking the Wales Coast Path. So if you want information on walking it and the specifics, then have a look at cicerone.co.uk forward slash live and you can catch up with that there. But actually today we're going to be talking a little bit more about what goes on behind the scenes to launch and maintain a path like the Wales Coast Path. It's 870 miles of path, so it's a huge, huge job. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Seanad Humphreys from the Wales Coast Path team. Hi, Seanad. Hello, how are you? Good. I'm excited to talk about this. We had our live event with Patty Dillon uh, last week, and we, we did touch on how well-maintained the path is and how the infrastructure is just so, so brilliant on the path. But before we dig into that, why are we talking today? What path are we talking about? Um, What's going on this year for the path? Well, we're talking about uh, the Wales Coast Path, one of the only footpaths in the world to follow a nation's entire coastline. Um, It is amazing and I would say that of course because I do work for the team and I spend quite a lot of time on on the Wales Coast Path but the reason we're talking today is it's um, 10 years since the Wales Coast Path was officially launched on the 5th of May it was 10 years exactly but we've decided that it's a year-long celebration Um, our aim is to get as many people as possible to discover the Wales Coast Path and all it has to offer So hopefully during this podcast, people will be inspired to pick up a guidebook or to pick out um, the map and to, you know, put a backpack on your back, get some boots and um, enjoy and walk and be inspired. So we're talking about the, the path today, but I think it's really worth checking out some of the other features that we've got on the website Uh, We've also got our Cicerone ambassador, Sarah Williams, is currently walking the path and she is sharing all over social media. She's sharing videos and pictures and vlogs of her walk and she's meeting up with lots of different people. Um, In fact, I believe you've met up with her quite recently, Sinead. Yes, we had a wonderful walk uh, from Nevin to Portinshine last week. Uh, The sun came out. Um, the flowers were amazing and lots and lots of bird life. It was a wonderful walk and, and I really enjoyed meeting Sarah. She was so inspiring and the way I wanted to understand how you go about walking the whole coast path in one. Um, I've met lots of people who do it in bits over a series of years. I've got a friend who has is has walked 600 miles now, but it's taken him six years to walk that distance but Sarah is just amazing Phen- phenomenally organized inspiring took loads and loads of video loads of photographs it's really worthwhile um following her journey um on Instagram and the other social media platforms because she really brings the path to life um she really finds the interesting angle um she meets really great people And um, it's brilliant and hopefully a lot of people will be inspired by her and maybe follow in her footsteps. I know she is um, following um, the Cicerone um, guide um, fairly accurately um, and it's really interesting to get feedback from her about how her walk is going and what um, issues she's coming across, but more importantly what she's enjoying and um, yes, she's truly inspirational. I wouldn't like to follow her footsteps I don't think I prefer a more leisurely pace I must admit but um yeah it's great yeah she's doing the whole path in 50 days so that yeah that's that is quicker than we suggest in the book she's done a little bit of fast packing as part of that but it's by no means the quickest that people have done it we were we found out that the the quickest person to do it overall did it in something like 24 days I can't get my head around that at all. It's such a a long path. 
But anyway, it is especially nice with with seeing what Sarah does. We can talk about how lovely it is, but it's just talk. Whereas with Sarah, you can literally see where she is. And and it really does make you think, oh, wow, I had no idea that Wales could look like that. Or, you know, I think sometimes people have this image of what they expect in, in their heads and maybe they've been to Cardiff once or they've been to Swansea once, but the, the coast is, it's just jaw dropping. It's, it's just beautiful. What she was, she mentioned, and I think I feel the same ways, it's how varied it is. Um, she obviously started in Flint at the beginning of the path, at the northern end of the path, and she's walked the uh, North Wales coast, um, which is fairly flat. Um, and then she um, went round um, Anglesey, which is the island, takes um, normally takes eight or nine days to walk Anglesey, and that is very varied. Um, but what's fantastic about Anglesey is that it's got lovely um, coastal towns and villages um, that, you know, you want to stay for longer. Um, and then she'd made her way back onto the mainland. And um, I met her um, in the on the northern part of the Clean Peninsula, which is fantastic. It is jaw dropping. Um, but it was brilliant to hear that she'd really enjoyed culinary experiences along the way she'd camped in different places she'd stayed in pods and it's just the sheer variety of accommodation and food and drink provision that is available on the coast path and I think that's one of the uh, unique selling points of the Wales Coast Path is that 10 years later a number of new businesses have established catering not just for walkers um, you know but people that do enjoy the coastline so the, you're never far from an eating place or somewhere to stay um, when you're on your journey, which is really helpful when it comes to planning, you know, a long distance walk. But also if it's just a day out, um, I've got teenage children and um, it can be quite a challenge to actually get them onto the coast path. But being able to say we'll have a nice meal or an ice cream or a dip in the sea is, um, is something that, you know, they do actually warm to and they actually enjoy the walking secretly as well. I remember my teenage years and that's exactly what I was like. I hated going for walks in the Lake District. Every weekend I was like, oh, we're going into the Lake District again and we're doing another walk. And actually it was going to uni in Bristol that made me suddenly realise what I'd had in the Lake District. You know, not that Bristol's not nice, but it was just, oh, actually I was quite lucky. So sometimes it takes a while for people to realise that they did appreciate things. And that's probably true for all teenagers in, in many different ways. Anyway, back to the path. I can't believe it's actually been 10 years of the Wales Coast Path. But the truth is that, you know, it, it was developed over much more time than that. So can you tell me a little bit how it came together and, and how it got started? Yes, well, um, the Pembrokeshire Coast Path has been established for over half a century and um the Anglesey Coast Path and parts of the Lean Coast Path were established before 2012. Um, but the Welsh Government realised the economic benefits and the health benefits a coast path has. And it was their vision. Um, there was European support available to increase and to improve infrastructure. And so they brought the 16 local authorities, um, six, the path runs through 16 out of the 22 local authorities in Wales. So it's a real partnership. Uh, Natural Resources Wales um, oversaw that project. And um, together with the two national parks, they began the process of bringing landowners and councils together to create um, a, a coast path where there wasn't a coast path. And during the last 10 years, the teams across Wales have been working really hard to improve. You know, they wanted to launch it as part of the fact that the Olympics were in London in 2012. So it was launched as part of the legacy. But the teams have been improving and realigning and um, surveying regularly to see how they can improve the path, make it more accessible to all, because that's one of the the really important um, objectives of the path is that, you know, that, that there are increasing number of um, stretches available for people who are in wheelchairs or have less mobility and also for, you know, for family groups who have maybe pushed chairs. So the surfaces are continuously improved. 
and stretches that you know could be um, tarmacked or could be um, that are flat, flat and lend themselves to have flat surfaces, you know, are um, you know are, are improved. I was struck when Paddy was talking um, in his his webinar recently how he you know, was inspired by the fact and you know, surprised really how well the path is signposted, and that's one of the things that the team works hard to ensure that people you know do. There's nothing more frustrating than being on a path and then losing the path. So I think you know the the team you know they do they walk they physically walk the path on an annual basis and survey it to make sure that you know the furniture that the, uh, the, the gates the styles the benches are all in good working order and where you know there's potential for a bridge so that people don't have to walk up an estuary or um, if there's places where they think that the path needs to be re re realigned then then they do that so you know the team is really committed to improvement and continuous improvement. And I think, you know, it was really lovely to hear Paddy would walked the path 10 years ago and he'd also walked it again 10 years later. And it was lovely to hear. It was a testament to the hard work of the team and of actually the ones that didn't tune in. They, they've been sent the link so that they can tune in so that they can actually sit back and say, oh, yeah, we were part of that. So, yeah, so it's, it's a real collective effort. And, of course, got landowners um, all along the 870 miles that you know work with us in partnership to maintain the path. It's a huge operation every year to cut the grass and to, to ensure that the path is passable. Um, I know in Pembrokeshire there's 190 miles odd of path and you know a big part of the maintenance is to make sure that the vegetation um, is cut back and obviously it's not perfect and you know it just really depends on the weather of how quickly in the season it needs to be cut and whether it needs to be cut more than once. But, you know, that's, you know, a whole team of volunteers um, and paid staff, for, you know, busy making sure that it is passable and where there are problems that, you know, they are sorted out quickly. It's almost like with waterproof jackets, the mark of the best waterproof jacket is the one that you don't notice. And it's a bit of a shame that you could walk the entire Wales Coast Path and have such a good time that you're not particularly noticing how good the infrastructure is and how well looked after the path is. So I think it is it is important for us to just take this time and just say, actually, there is a team of people behind the scenes who don't normally get sort of praised on on the work that they've done. But it's I mean, it's the same across so many paths that we appreciate that actually there is a lot of work that goes into that, making it as easy as possible for people to enjoy. I mean, how many people look after the, the Wales Coast Path? Well, each local authority will have a countryside team, but they won't necessarily be working continuously just on the Wales Coast Path. Um, you know, but they will have, you know, people allocated. Um, we have um, around five um, regional officers and they work um, with the with the local authorities, so you know there is you know there are, are five or six designated officers, and then there are an additional two or three members of staff in each local authority who would have some responsibility for the coast path. So you know there are you know there is an army in a way. They're also supported um, by a great army of volunteers. Um, on Anglesey, for example, they have the silver slashers that work in partnership <laughs> with the local authority team to improve footpaths. Um, you know, I, I saw them a couple of years ago and they were busy putting steps in where there was kind of a steep bank that was eroding. And so, and so they kind of really got, got stuck in and, you know, they kind of put gates in and replaced styles with gates and you know improve access works and you know work as part of an extended team so we can't underestimate you know the volunteer contribution to the path that happens sometimes you know without us knowing and you know it's so fantastic that you know the teams are you know are available to support them um, I know the National Trust are big big landowners um, of the Wales Coast Path and their teams of volunteers I don't think they could function without them so you know that's a shout out for all the people that are doing that because they enjoy being in the outdoors and they want to make a contribution. 
if nobody walked the path, it wouldn't have been able to survive 10 years and to be as popular as it is. So I think every single person who walks any stretch of the path and walks it in a responsible way, um, I think that's really important. And, you know, if there are people and they see a bit of litter and they pick up a piece of litter, or even if it's just people who make sure that they leave no trace when when they are on the path, that's really important because that's meaning that it's not a volunteer or a member of staff who's then got to go and sort out the problem. Um, if people are careful about leaving no trace, then the landowners are likely to be more happy about people using the land. It's us all taking responsibility as well when we're enjoying these spaces. I think that was a really interesting thing that you mentioned before about accessibility and potentially tarmacking. And then you were saying about putting steps in because of erosion. And I think we should just talk about that a little bit and say, you know, you're not just trying to tarmac the coast of Wales so that people can whiz up and down it, but the there are environmental considerations going on with all of that as well, aren't there? So you, you look out for that side of things as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, ensuring that the the path is fit for purpose is, you know, is a is our key responsibility. Making sure that, you know, you know, there are there are um, you know, issues of um, you know, we are having drier um periods and wetter winters. And, you know, it all takes a toll on the path. The path becomes very hard um, and sometimes cracks. And so, you know, the continuous improvements to actually identify the parts that aren't perfect and that are causing problems, um, you know, is a great part of the, of the responsibility of the team. And, you know, um, you know, obviously there are contractors that um, are taken in to, you know, support the work. Um, and to make improvements so that the whole walking experience is as good as it can be. And what do you do to protect the environment then uh, along the path and the, you know, the biodiversity? Do you do you have any targets and and things for that? As you walk the Wales Coast Path, um, you will be walking through lots of really fragile environments, um, natural nature reserves, national parks, and it's about being aware of the environment and um, leaving no trace, being sensitive to the fact that, you know, you are walking through potential nesting sites, that there will be um, animals, flora and fauna that won't want to be disturbed. So it's just being really sensitive and being aware of your environment. But you're also walking through a working environment. Quite often the path will go through a farmer's land or sometimes a farmer's yard um, or a, you know, a business or enterprise. And so it's just being really sensitive to the fact that people, you know, are working, um, you know, that it is a working environment and just to be aware, to leave things as they are, you know, take note and to be friendly. And, you know, it, it really is a diverse path that, you know, tracks through so many really interesting places. Um, so it's just making you know, making sure that you're being a responsible walker. Yeah, there's there's like an ongoing educational aspect to enjoying the outdoors, I think. Um, there's been a lot of negative press about people who have, you know, enjoyed the outdoors after COVID or during COVID and not been responsible. And I like to think that there's not actually that many people doing that. I, I'd prefer that we can be completely welcoming and really get everybody to love the outdoors but that we just need to you know let people know of the impact and how important it is to leave no trace we want to make the outdoors in general somewhere that everybody can enjoy and the Wales Coast Path specifically you know you want it to be there for everyone you want it to be as accessible for everybody for for now and into the future I think that you know walkers you know, can, can educate each other. It's about, you know, as you say, it's about leaving no trace. It's about following the countryside code, leaving gates as they were, taking your rubbish home with you and making sure that, you know, the environment is as special as it was, um, you know, when you first got there. And, you know, there have been, there have been issues with fires, with rubbish, with, you know, illegal camping. I've got a really lovely initiative with Refill Cymru um, and, 
we are really committed to ensuring that um, the environment, the Wales Coast Path is plastic free. So there's over 600 sites where you can actually refill your bottle, you know, and that's just a small contribution of not buying and using plastic, but to actually um, use uh, re refillable bottles um, at the site. So there's a lovely little app you can use that um, you can geolocate and make sure that you, you can have access to water. And it's making sure that you take that opportunity when you can, because, you know, there are some stretches where, you know, you won't find one for a few miles. So, um, you know, those little steps can, you know, can make a big difference. Um, it's about, you know, taking notice and, um, you know, having a look at the website when it is nesting season, when it is season where the seals are giving birth on the coast and it's you know, just keeping your distance and you know making sure that you're not impacting on the wildlife but it is special and what we want it to stay that way it's world refill day on the 16th of june and so that's a day where we can all celebrate and all raise awareness of the fact that we don't need to buy plastic bottles um, to walk around the coast path can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the coast path well, as I mentioned, it's a year of activities and, you know, there's a few things that have already been launched. We've got partnership with CADU, which is the equivalent to English Heritage, and we've worked with them on 12 short itineraries where you can walk for a part of the day and visit one of the amazing castles and ancient monuments they have to offer. So we've just launched those itineraries that are on our itineraries page of the Wales Coast Path website. We've also developed a suite of new resources for educators, both formal and informal educators. Um, one of our key aims is to inspire the next generation to enjoy, look after and visit the Coast Path. And so Natural Resources Wales' education team have developed some amazing resources for teachers and not only in the formal environment, but also for informal volunteer groups, such as guides and the young farmers, um, you know, to go out there and really enjoy and stand um, and learn about the Wales Coast Path. So we've just launched those um, in this um, in a webinar and um, we're actually offering um, the schools and the um, those that came to the webinars a financial contribution so that they can actually come to the Coast Path with their groups and walk the coast path in this celebration year. Oh, that's fabulous. Yes, we're really excited to, to learn where they get to, you know, what they've enjoyed and, you know, even, you know, positive and negative feedback about their experience. And we've also worked with Year of the National Youth Movement. Um, they have two centres on the coast path, one in Llangranog and one in Cardiff Bay. And we've developed over 30,000 young people visit every year um, to those centres and so they will obviously you know part of their visit will be to explore the coast um, so we've developed some great resources in partnership with them so that when those 30,000 children come to those centres they can be inspired and learn a bit about the coast path and hopefully when they go back to their um, respective areas they can you know visit the path again so it's all about kind of creating opportunities and um, inspiring people to go out there and enjoy. Uh, one of the other things that we've been working on for a while is a new range of merchandise. We've had so many requests of people that have walked the coast path, part of the coast path, enjoyed it. Can they buy something to remind them of their journey? And so we've developed a range of merchandise that will be launched um, later on in May. People will be able to buy useful and different products to commemorate their journey or to use whilst they're on their journey. And the great thing about um, that partnership is the fact that um, a proportion of the profits will go back to the maintenance and upkeep of the, of the path. Um, we've obviously got a new guidebook. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I can't go past without mentioning the Cicero book, but there are uh, um, also some of the books that have been developed. Um, there's a lovely story of two ladies um, called Lucy and Airless, who were retired, were, Lucy retired, and um, their challenge was to walk the coast path. So they've done it slowly, quite the opposite of Sarah. They've walked the coast path really slowly. And so there's a, a lovely book that just captures their journey. It's not a guidebook, but it's an experience and it's lovely. Um, I've talked to both and they're so inspiring about, you know, what they enjoyed and who they met 
wit and the challenges and the funny stories. So it's a really human story um, of their experience walking. And what's that called? Slow walking the Wales Coast Path. Yeah, that sounds more my style, must admit. A few other elements we have during this year is that we're really, really delighted that the series of walking festivals, community-based festivals, re-established after COVID. And there's a host of uh, walks um, from one-mile rambles to more challenging walks right across the coast throughout the year, starting in May. And um, I'd really recommend that you have a look at the Wales Coast Path website and the event section because there are more and more being added all the time um, and it's fantastic that uh, St Dogmills have all got their um, walking festivals back on but there's also the Vale of Glamorgan have got a series of walks going on to Gower so there's a real opportunity across the country if you wanted to be part of a group um, to, to take part and um, obviously there are fringe events there are speakers there are dinners and it's really sociable um, event so I'd really recommend you check out the website for the dates and specific information about those and then one of the other projects that is going to um, kick off during June and run to next spring is a culture and arts project we're going to commission artists and poets from across Wales to create during uh, this 10th anniversary year. Um, and the installations will take different forms. There will be events, there may be um, guided walks, and also you know, the poems and the art itself will be shared across the social media platforms. Um, and we're hoping there'll be community-based engagement as well. So that's quite exciting and that's quite notable for the 10th anniversary. And we're really delighted as well that Ivor Glynn, he's the National Poet of Wales. He has created a new poem to celebrate and to wish walkers well and to welcome them back after they finish their journey. And his words um, are at the moment being set at the beginning, the northern end of the path um, in Flintshire and at the southern end in Chepstow. And so we've been aware for a while that um, we needed to have um, some more information and a gateway at the northern end and the southern end. So work is under, uh, underway now to do that. And part of it will be Yvonne's words um, to wish walk as well. So if people are about to embark on the journey or fin about to finish the journey, um, if they're walking later on this year, they'll see um, the new newly erected installations at both ends of the path it's just there's so much to talk about it's it's 870 miles and it goes through like you just mentioned Gower there in like you know half a second oh yeah Gower and you just think but Gower on its own Gower is just incredible it's the most beautiful place and the Wales Coast Path it's kind of like a highlights of Wales in a way you know yes there are there are other incredible parts of Wales. Wales is not just its coast, but you do get to go through these incredible paths that on their own would be a fantastic holiday. Um, so if you can, you know, if you can spare the time to do the whole thing, you you just get in hit after hit after hit. Um, and there's quite a lot of art on the way as well, isn't there, o already? Absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it's working coastline. Um, but it's a historic coastline. This, I find the history of the coast so interesting. The shipwrecks, I think there are over 3,000 shipwrecks within two kilometres of the coastline. You think of all those stories, the wars, the conquests, um, but also the social history, you know, the fishermen, the smugglers. There's just, you know, once you start delving into the our coastline you know it's so interesting and so diverse and you know from the land speed record in Pendine to Scott's ship I think you know that that is something you know language the bit the characters that you meet the cultural aspects I think you know taken together it's just phenomenal it's a tapestry of um, you know experiences and you know I'd really recommend people you know, take the time out, 
explore the coast path, even if it's part of another experience. You know, and also you think of all the um, opportunities for adventure sports on the coast. So, you know, it doesn't have to be all about walking. You can, you know, take time out and explore. And it's, for me, it's all the the culinary experiences <laughs> along the way. I can't walk a piece of coast path without having a drink or an ice cream or a lovely meal. And I think, you know, that's, you know, it's part of a holiday, isn't it? If you went anywhere else, um, and I think, you know, staying in different places and, you know, just exploring the t- coastal towns and villages when you finish your walk is something, you know, quite special. What what more can we say? I think it's exactly right. There is, there's, there's so much to, to enjoy. And your point about flexibility, I think is really important. You know, you can, you can get the train, you can do a weekend, you can have a city break and do a bit of the path, you know, wherever you are. There's, there's always a bit of the Wales Coast Path that you can make your own and you can enjoy, which I think is really special as well. It's not over remote and over challenging. You know, it is it is a coast path that everybody could could go and do a couple of days of, even if they can't do the, the full the full thing. And also the one thing that um, I haven't mentioned is the fact that, you know, there's really good public transport provision for walkers. You know, there are designated um, services like the Cardibach, which is a bus shuttle that goes from each coastal town and village along the Ceredigion coastline. But there's also services, bespoke services for walkers in Pembrokeshire and the Lean Peninsula. But there's also a really good transport network from buses and trains all along the coastline. So, you know, just a little bit of research, um, it's comprehensive information on our website. You can really plan a linear journey using public transport, which is again, you know, something really powerful and really interesting um, and really good for people. Fantastic. Right, well, we better draw this to a, an end if we've got to record the whole thing again in Welsh, which is going to be challenging for me. As, as much as I'd love to listen to you record it all in Welsh, I will not inflict that on our, our listeners. Um, you'll be delighted to know. But thank you, Shaned. That was It was really good to talk to you. Really, really important, I think, to share the work of the Wales Coast Path team, as well as just to celebrate the path itself and as Shaned says, there will be celebrations happening all year. Either try to get out there and walk a little bit of the path or just go and have a cup of tea and look at the look at the Wales coast. Um, I'm sure you will not regret it at all. So yeah, thanks again, Shaned. Pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode of Footnotes the Cicerone Podcast. I'd love to know what you think, or if there's anything you'd like us to cover in future episodes please email live at cicerone.co.uk or leave a review on your podcast platform. You can follow or subscribe to the podcast to make sure you don't miss new episodes or you can sign up to our newsletter for all our latest news, events and guidebooks. Visit cicerone.co.uk for further details. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, come and find us on our social channels. We're on all the main ones as at Cicerone Press and we also have a Facebook group, Cicerone Connect, where you can meet and chat to other outdoor enthusiasts. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you soon.